I'm looking at what was once Maltby Grammar School. It's been renovated at the moment. I'm told it's very nice inside. But I've also been told that the springs actually run underneath Maltby Grammar School. I'll just show you where I think one of the outlets were. So you can see one of the outlets there that I think where the streams originally came down, the underground springs or whatever. But it's all been bricked up now. So I'm coming into the older part of Maltby and it's a totally different day to Friday when I came last time. But I wasn't 100% sure about where I was going and uh, wasn't a brilliant video anyway. So last time I did a video I never showed people this sign. I'm not even going to pronounce it. Can anybody actually pronounce it and tell me what it actually means? But we've got some great old buildings around here and as you can see it, this wants some real TLC on it. This is the old white swan just here. Now five rivers. But we're just going to walk down Church Lane to St Bartholomew's. I'll just show you some at first. So I showed you that what I thought was an outlet for a, a spring. Well there's one on the just here as well. There's not actually picked up. I don't think it's water the water flowing from the road. I could be wrong on that, but So here I am outside St Bartholomew's, just come through the gate, you can see a public footpath, I'm going to pop down here and make my way to Roach Abbey. Another view of the church from here, I've got a longer video on the church but I thought I'd just show it here as I'm, I walk down here. So we're now around the back of the church, you can see one of these springs that has come from probably Morby Grammar School. I'm going to take this path here and go around here. But we do pass another stream on the other side of the church, so that stream is coming down that side of the church. And it's one for Dave Everney. Dave, what do you reckon with the water flowing either side of the church? Let's see if I can find the other one down here. But we're sort of heading towards Maltby Crags and it's the first time I've ever been last Friday but it was the thickest dirtiest day <laughs> I've experienced for a long time but it's completely opposite this time we get a little bit more of a view on the church as we come round here and you can see the uh, the window on it. It's not the most spectacular when you look at what's actually on Doncaster Minster. Well, somebody just said to me that church goes back to Norman times. It's just been added on and built on. So I want to find points for interest. I'll just restart the camera. So I said there was another sort of spring or stream and there's one just here on the other side of the church as well. I'm guessing I'm on a ley line at the moment if I'm going from St Bartholomew's to Roach Abbey. Probably somebody who's up on things like that can confirm whether this has been built or whether Roach Abbey and this church have been built in particular places because they're on the same ley line. I know close to me there's a road called Lays Lane. But you can start to see the Maltby Dyke in the bottom. It's a much more pleasant day than when I came last time. Well, like a gentleman's just said, isn't it much more peaceful when you're actually on your own rather than the maddening crowd? But it's so much like Anston Stones at Anston 
with the river running in the bottom were the limestone cliffs but also the South Yorkshire Joint Railway runs through here and also through Anston Stones and it picks up the line to works up but that line to works up can also go the opposite direction to Sheffield if they put a reverse camber in at Lindrick Dale and that's something I'm pushing for or I have done in the past, I actually spoke to my MP about it or oh, previous MP Alexander Stafford and I also spoke to South Yorkshire Mayor about it but being fobbed off at the moment, not by Alexander who was really good even though I've never voted for him but South Yorkshire Mayor all have got their own agenda there's far more people live out in this area than lives at Stocksbridge but they're more focused on Stocksbridge for a reason but we're sort of skirting around the edge of Maltby see St Bartholomew's just up there and we'll see where it goes I'm pretty much certain I know where it goes now <laughs> So I'm just going to give a shout out for Richard Burns, I'll pop his channel in the description. Now Richard mentioned this walk when I did the video on Maltby Church and it'd be nice to see Richard doing a bit more content again, he's gone quiet on his content. It's not easy on YouTube building a new channel but it is worth it and Richard has a different slant on things to me another born and bred Sheffield there who like me likes his history and having a more balanced uh, economy one that's got industry in it as well so when I get over there I'll pick back up you just see the scenery around so there's actual pathways converging all over the place around here I've just seen a Bird. Much better to shoot him on camera, isn't it, than to shoot him in real life. He'll not let me come up any closer. So last time I was here I was looking for some sort of heathland with some outcroppings of stone. So if you look for these stones here and then go up this footpath here you'll get up to the cenotaph and you'll also get up to this open area, area with some outcroppings of stone on it so when I get up there I'll put the camera back on it's a bit of a drag up the hill you may hear me out of breath a bit but here I am at the cenotaph we're very close to all the housing in Maltby, this skirts right around the edge a nice little area here to remember people so we've got the first world war on the top, there's certainly more deaths I think in the first world war there is in Anston, I know that it's about 10 times as many died in the uh, first as opposed to the second there You've got the second world war around here but i shan't uh, take any of these guys names in vain but what i will do is i'll say on behalf of my grandfathers and great grandfathers who fought for freedom i think they'd be very unhappy with the way the uk's gone since the war So we'll knit back down and I'll see if I can get into this heath area with these stones. So I'm going back downhill to those two big stones on the footpath. Don't know if they're marker stones. So I 
found their way in. Last time I came with my walking boots and I got my wellies on this time. But you can see out cropping to stone everywhere on a sort of heathland. And same again, it's just like Anston Stones. We have some areas like this in Anston Stones. So I don't know if these are just natural formations or whether they've been placed in this way. One there, one there. So I'm in the middle of ferns. Pretty disgraceful that people fly tip in areas like this. They've got no self-respect. I'm not going to get up there. Not with my camera in my hand to there. I'll go a bit further round. So I'm being a bit careful where I tread round here because it's fly tipped. It's probably a good job I've got my wellies on. I'm not going to get up there, I don't think. Yeah. So I've come a bit further down and I can get round and get up here. On top of these sections, I've gone in too early or too late. I'm on top of one of them now. But it's just so like Anston Stones. Another site of scientific interest. So a good view from here. If you're going to come in countryside, at least tidy up after yourself. You know what I'm talking, so it won't be anybody viewing my videos and have that. So just over here, if I'm lucky, you can see, I'm looking for it now, I lost it. There it is, Lawton All Saints Church, I think. The Lawton on the Morthens just there. And if we go right in on it, Save me doing a short video, you can see scaffolding on it at the moment. Now I've been up there and seen the river at Scunthorpe. People claim they see the sea from up there. No, they don't. They see the blast furnaces and the river running round Scunthorpe. But it was a bit unsafe when we went up about 20 years ago. We're not sure how we got up. I think it was done on the fly. I think we paid a quid or something to go up. But you can see the scaffolding on it there. So here we are at the South Yorkshire Joint Railway, constructed for all the collieries round here in the 19th century. You could carry a little bit of passenger traffic, but not much. Some of the stations were shut down in the 1930s. I'll just show you a view a little bit further up a bit. So I've come a little bit away just to show you the South Yorkshire Joint Railway. Behind me it'll take you to Doncaster, I think this way will probably take you into Maltby, I could be wrong, but it's only single track here, but I'm sure they could put a double track up. But it don't really matter because in places like Switzerland, they have passing places, so they have a single track down, and then they have places where you can pass. So it goes one track into Dinnington, then when it gets to Dinnington, it goes two tracks into Anston and then the Anston line connects up to works up and if they put a small camber in there's already a viaduct in and it can go to Sheffield as well so we could be running trams from Maltby, Dinnington and Anston into Sheffield works up or even the other way into Doncaster could really th open things up if we had forward thinking government but like I said Alexander Stafford was really positive towards me. When I spoke to South Yorkshire Mayor, they made excuses why they couldn't do it. 
Now they seem more bothered about Stocksbridge. It seems to be South Yorkshire Mayoral are just bothered about anything directly in Sheffield with Stocksbridge being under Sheffield. They seem more bothered about Stocksbridge than they do the other outlying areas because South Yorkshire Mayoral should be focusing on Sheffield, Doncaster, Rotherham and Barnsley. But they seem to be focusing mainly on Sheffield and it's so unfair that most of the money that we were given after HS2 got cancelled will be going to the super tram actually in Sheffield and not to us that lives in the outlying areas of South Yorkshire. So all it's doing is spending money on wasteful things. So I've just detoured from the footpath to show you South Yorkshire Joint Railway from above. I could go now straight along here to Roe Chave but what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop into the bottom for a reason. It's quite steep to go down here and I think I've got a big steep climb when I get to the other end but I just want to show you the river in the bottom. I'm going to follow the river along when I get to the bottom and then I think at the other end I may have to go up this big cliff but this time I haven't got an umbrella with me like I did last Friday just got the camera in my hand so it should be a bit easier so anybody who don't fancy going up and down hills you didn't have to come down this bit I'm just coming down here just to show you the river in the bottom I'm just going to follow this river around it's all very similar just wooded area with this river running through it so once I've shown you this little bit it's a bit pointless carrying the camera on because it's all the same and I thought I'd just show you this and this is the Maltby Dyke D-Y-K-E but it's uh, nice and peaceful when there's nobody around as you can see I've had some uh, nights at Roach Abbey where there's gangs of youths coming in from Malt Bay and uh, they're not always so pleasant Not it's not just letting a little bit of steam off it's a little bit more than that so uh, when I find something interesting I'll put the camera back on so all the way from where I showed you all those stones on a heathland it's pretty much limestone all the way along here like a gorge but it's hidden behind the trees we should actually start to pick it up in a moment as I get a bit further along so you can start to see the limestone gorge it's all the way along here but it's in behind trees or behind earth this is what they'd have built Roach Abbey out of but if you've ever been to Anston Stones you'll see the river in the bottom and then at the side of it you see the limestone gorge and I do recommend going to Anston Stones if you never have been it's a great walk down there if you park at the Anston Recreation Ground bottom of the book where the council officers are and then you can walk through to Anston Stones that way and if you walk around just at the bottom where the river is and then you can come back round the top with the stairs or steps cut in to the side of the hill in Anston whereas there isn't at Maltby I'm going to have to scoot up a hill in a moment but I'm going to show you a bit more around here as we go along and just see a bit Just here, just through there you can see a bit more of it but it's all the way along it must be running for miles this limestone gorge. A bit more of the gorge up there I'm looking for a pathway up at the moment. So I'm sure I can carry all the way along this to Roach Abbey. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here now, it's a bit of a climb. Like I said, you don't even have to come in this bottom area. So I'm just going to clamber up here. So I'm back up on the top level now. 
I didn't need to do it, I just did it for the hell of doing it, as I say. See how far down it is. That's a couple of squirrels. But like I said, you can either go along the top path or along the bottom path and follow the, the river round. And you can like go along the top path, go in and then come back on the bottom path. Coming back, you can see the road down there. I think that might be Gypsy Lane that. Road for the Rod Rod the Valley in a moment. Sorry, Road Chow, not Rod the Valley. So you can see more limestone just there. That's a dead end. I've got no map. I just follow my nose. So I've cut back onto the footpath. I clambered down at the start to get to the river. Like I say, you can take the high road or you can take the low road. So at this point, I'm cutting down onto Gypsy Lane. And I'm gonna pick up the uh, footpath into uh, Row Chabby in a moment. So in a moment, I'm gonna show you fly tipping at bottom, but I'm on Gypsy Lane, and you can see where they've fly tipped from the top, but you can see all boxes at the bottom as well. I've reported this to both Street Pride and also to the three war councillors for Maltby. But I'm gonna get into the bottom, and you'll see how bad it is at the bottom as well. So, it's a bit further along where I saw it, it's here. But you can see these boxes, there must be loads of these boxes, they must have been ordered. So whoever ordered these boxes, you should be able to then find out who they are from the supplier and then find out why they've allowed them all to be dumped here and prosecute. But some of this looks like we dumped it. So that must be lights, LED fixtures, isn't it? So that's what they must be using to grow it. And then that's what they've been growing. So uh, they must be traceable back these. If somebody's ordered them online, then you've got the culprit, haven't you? But we'll get onto the footpath at the bottom. So I'm on Gypsy Road. So I could have come that way from the river at the bottom, but I decided to go back to the top for the sake of it. And I'm coming in on footpaths just here. We'll follow this through to uh, Roach Abbey. So you can see the bottom where they fly tipped, but you can see that, I thought there were steps when I looked the other day, I didn't realize it was so dark. So the light, so all these boxes, they must have been ordered online, I'm guessing. So they ought to be able to track back to order these online and make some prosecutions. So you can see the gorge all along here. But it probably goes all the way back to Maltby Crags anyway, just hidden behind either earth banking or trees. So this is the entrance way in from on the Old Coats Maltby Road. Comes down a bit of a cobbled road but it's shut 
shut about five o'clock or something like that and there's some car parking just to the right of me just here so here's the gateway to Roach Abbey would have been two levels this I'll just quickly show you inside it just see inside it This is the entrance way to Roach Abbey if you ever want to come in. I think it's about five quid for you if you're a English heritage. You can see more of the limestone cliff here. So you can walk all the way around Roach Abbey without going in. It's a really nice walk at lasting at night when it's nice and peaceful. It must have been some terrific place before Henry VIII. Got a few signs around here. And what I might quickly do is just go on to Witcher's Cliff and just show you a bird's eye view of it from Witcher's Cliff. But I've got a full video on this as well anyway, but seeing as people are watching the video, I might as well have the full monte. I could hear muttering voices on Witcher's Cliff so I didn't really fancy going up there, I didn't know who I was going to see when I got up there. But I have got a video from Witcher's Cliff, I'll put links in the description to my full tour around Roach Abbey, I just thought I'd show you this. That's all that's really left of it, such a shame. And if I get a chance, if there's nobody hanging around the gatehouse, I'll just give you a view of the gatehouse on the way out. I just don't like filming when this kid's around so I avoid it I always find this doorway really interesting I walk through it and I have to bend my head to get through but this site's owned by the Earl of Scarborough I think it is really it should be owned by the people at the moment English heritage I think rent it back but there was a lot of damage done to it when it was after it was actually um, destroyed they turned, created it into a feature, I think, for it like a garden feature and did even more destruction on it than had been done before. Just a quick sweep in it. So I'm making my way back to the gatehouse. So the nights are certainly coming in now. I'm going to make a, bit, a quick run back home. I just want to show you the gatehouse from this side. Oh, there's no people around it. But one interesting thing on it, it's really for Dave Ebony and Miss Havisham. On the other side you can see like a red coating. And I see it sporadically around Roach Abbey, like you can see a bit of red there. But I just want to show you on this entrance way. Just here it's quite clearly very red in places and it's worn off and it's as though at one bit Roach Abbey was painted this like a reddy colour. I can't believe it's a reaction with the atmosphere when it's completely clear on this. So how you'd expect it but on this to me it looks as though Roach Abbey was once painted this colour and if you go around the rest of the ruins you'll actually see that same reddy colour especially down where the river is at the side of the river as it runs through because the Maltby Dyke runs right through here if I had to follow the Maltby Dyke down the bottom it has still brought me in the same direction so if you can like the video follow the channel click on notifications for new videos in the future I'd appreciate that